Hello everybody and welcome to the new episode of the Sick and Sound TV. My name is Dan. Today we are going to talk about the first controversial topic in the EDM world, which is, guess what? The ghost producers. Let's do this. I'm pretty sure that you heard this word before. This is not a kind of supernatural thing. These guys are real musicians and experts of music who completely produce tracks for money without revealing their identity. Roughly, this is the most common definition of what the public knows. But first, let's clear what the word means. The first part is the ghost. It's obvious, a person who is in the background only. The second word is producer, I'm thinking about music producers. A music producer is not a simple musician, he's kind of same like the director in the movies, director of music. He controls all of the phases of the music making, controlling the musicians, lyrics writers, mixing and mastering engineers, choosing the elements and ideas. He is like a conductor, keep the whole thing together. Most of the times a hit is not made by only one man. Usually every part of the song is made by another expert. There is a special man who writes the vocal. Nader writes the lyrics. Nader teaches the singer how to sing in that particular track. This is called the vocal coach. The instrumentals made by two or three guys or more. There is another guy for the mixing and there is another guy for the mastering as well. From this point, Jay-Z or Taylor Swift, for instance, is working with ghost producers. But there is a fact, an open secret, that back in the days some famous rock bands had also ghost guitarist during the recording part, only in the recording part. In electronic dance music the process is a bit different, usually there are only two or three people maximum for the whole music. It's not a big secret that in a dance scene the 80% of the artist DJs has gross producers. Nobody say anything for Beyonce for instance that she don't know the plugins or she can do a sidechain compression on a bass line in her song. So why people hate big AAA names for this fact? I think it's not easier to make a dance music than a pop or a rock track. Many times artists hire ghost producers because they don't know the technical side of the music making, but have a lot of great and useful ideas for the track which makes the track famous later. They are giving good inputs for the producers and make sure that they put the personality of the artist into the music. It's like having a ghostwriter in your book of your life. Most of the famous biographies are made by ghostwriters obviously, but the story comes from the person indeed. I'm sure that some of you may think that it isn't fair with a lot of artists who are doing their tracks on their own, but it's like having an argument about when a DJ plays the track from a laptop or a vinyl. Crowds care about only the final product, not the producing method. I think it isn't a shame asking for help from a professional when you don't have enough knowledge or experience or resources. You obviously take your car to the service when you have serious problem with your car. Of course I don't want to protect those guys who are just paid the producer and rename the mp3 file without giving any inputs, but nobody can do anything against these guys, so it's better to see the positive aspect of this topic. Anyway, in collaborations when other artists only making the coffee in the studio is almost the same situation, just the producer is credited in the song. Interesting. Also, you don't have to feel sorry for the ghost producers, I think, who hasn't got any spotlight yet. Sometimes it's a great chance to gain new friends and contacts, sometimes they could improve their studio with new stuff from the income, or just living entirely from music making without having another full-time job. So I told my opinion about this, now it's your turn, leave your comment and opinion in the comment section below, I'm really curious about your comments. If you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up in YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. See you in the next episode of the Sick and Sound TV. Bye bye.